there's an old poem, or really it's, it's more of a proverb. Um, it's had many different iterations throughout the last several centuries, and it's called For Want of a Nail. Some of you may have heard of it, but basically it goes like this. For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of the shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of the battle, the kingdom was lost, and all for the want of a horseshoe nail. And basically, it's highlighting just how important the little things can be. And that's kind of the focus for this week's question. It's the importance of checking the simple things when we begin troubleshooting a problem. That needs to be a very integral part of our mindset as developers. When we face a problem, when we're assigned a task, something that needs to be fixed, do we immediately jump in to the most difficult aspects of it, or do we check the simple things first? And that's really a crucial part of the debugging process. Uh, Joseph mentions it in his book, The Art of Debugging, which you can check out at swiftauto.com. There's a lot of great resources there to help you learn, to keep you sharp as a developer. But that mindset of check it, checking the simple things is very important. And again, that's what the question focuses on this week. So let's take a look at the question. After upgrading a site and then setting up a staging environment using a database from production, your QA team notices the following error when testing the edit functionality on an order. So we see the error is could not retrieve customer profile, warning attempt to, re to read property customers on null in stripe customer.php on line 300. And so the question is, what should you do first? I just want to highlight that the question here is not what's the problem, what's the resolution to it, but more a key into our thought process when we first approach a problem. What's going to be our first step in addressing what needs to be fixed? So looking at the answers, we have option A, replicate the problem locally and set a breakpoint on the reference class or line to gather more information in the call stack. Option B, check for new plugins or preferences that may have been added during the upgrade and could be converted or converting the data being passed to Stripe customer, a class, or overriding it altogether. Finally, option C, review the Stripe payment module configuration to ensure compatibility with the staging environment. So there's our three options. Now discussing them, option A is a great step. I would imagine that we've all done that or variations of it using a debugger really gives a night and day difference into the insight that we have into a problem. We can gain way more information using a debugger than we can without. It shows us obviously the call stack. It shows us what a lot of the different variables are set to. It gives us the information we need to track down a bug. So that would be a great step. And again, I think we can all attest to the fact that we've taken that as our first step. So next we have option B. Now again, that is checking for any plugins or preferences that might have been applied during some of the changes that were made. Um, and this kind of falls to an extent under step A. When we look through the call stack as we're debugging or we start stepping into some of those functions, we're going to find out if there's third party or any custom code that's causing the problem. But that's not necessarily going to be our first step. It really wouldn't necessarily be a good step to immediately jump into looking through plugins that are related to the class, looking for specific preferences. Um, that, that could end up being quite a rabbit hole to go down, especially as an, again, initial first step. That would definitely have a place later on if we start seeing in the call stack or as we start stepping through the process, we see some of the stuff being changed, then yes, we definitely want to go and take a deeper look at that. But as an initial first step, I don't think that's going to be a good way to go. Now, as far as option C, our final option, that's going to be checking the configuration for the Stripe module that's mentioned in that error. And this is a very simple option. It's going to take just a few minutes and there have been several times in my experience when I've opened up the debugger, I've spent half an hour, maybe an hour stepping through different classes, different functions, looking for certain port ports of data and finding out that there was a config value that was set or wasn't set correctly 
and I could have fixed that problem. I could have found out what was causing this error in minutes instead of taking that additional time to step through the debugging process. And so option C is going to be the simplest and the quickest option. Just double checking that config, making sure that there's nothing there that's causing a problem. And so I'm going to say that we would start with that. That would be a very good first step. If we jump immediately into debugging, we're dedicated to that for at least a, a certain amount of time to make sure that we have a good handle on what's going on and tracking down that error. Again, option C, very simple. Open up the, the configuration and double check it. Make sure there's nothing going on there that we don't expect that could be causing that problem. And as a little background on this question, I actually experienced this problem just a week or two ago and got that exact, got that exact error and ended up being that the default config was set correctly for the Stripe module, but a previous developer on the project uh, before we had taken it over at Swift Otter had set the live Stripe credentials on a store view. So there was a store view that they had gone into, I'm not sure the reason why, and had taken the, the live secret key for Stripe and set it there. So even when we initially made that change, um, to set the test credentials for the Stripe module. Obviously, that didn't carry over into that store view, and it was throwing this error. And obviously, the fix was just as simple as setting that store view to use the default config. Very simple fix. Didn't take long at all. And it really highlighted for me, again, just the importance of checking the easy steps, those simple things first. They can really throw a wrench into our plans. Some of the bugs can be, can look very intricate, but can be as simple of a matter as just a little bit of config. Now, obviously, many times that's not going to fix the problem. Many times it's not going to be config or something simple. A lot of times we're going to have to spend a bunch of time debugging <laughs> to figure out where exactly that problem is. But sometimes we can get a quick win. Sometimes it can be, again, something extremely simple. And ultimately, we can come out looking like really smart, really talented developers. And who doesn't want that? 